While we are uh, gathering, first of all, for those of you, of you who are here already, I just want to thank you for spending your Saturday or a couple hours of your Saturday with us. Um, we hope that by the end of this webinar series, you're all going to feel really confident in hosting your own fests from start to finish. My name is Lori Robinson. Kathy, you want to introduce yourself? And I'm Kathy Seeley. <laughs> Kathy and I have been um, managing shows for quite a few years now, and I'll just uh, let you know how this meeting kind of came to be. We uh, were thinking about all the ho the the tests that we've got planned for this year. Kathy and I are hosting three of them and um, actually kind of I think four. But um, as we were looking around and we we're looking for other fest managers, we realized that in, at least in our region there are just a handful of us. And so we thought of the idea of um, maybe hosting a webinar to teach other people how to host a fest if they want to. and. Uh, mentioned this idea to Kathy Ray while we were having a meeting about um, the Fun Fest at Nationals. And she just said, I want you to uh, advertise it in the blast and invite everybody. And I said, why not? More the merrier. So for those of you who are here from all over the country, we welcome you and we hope you all get a lot out of this meeting. Kathy, do you have anything to add to that? Um, nope. Welcome. Okay. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start um, on this little piece of paper here that you should have gotten in your email. If you're joining us without um, without having right, email, bye. you don't have this. So uh, just go ahead and email me and we'll send you these things. Um, later on, but this is kind of our timeline for what we're going to do today and also the timeline for um, the planning part of a, of a competition. Now the best friend in planning a competition is going to be the rule book. The standing rules for vaulting start on page 23 of the rule book and the rules for vaulting start on 33 in the book. That would be go down here, take the elevator, go up to the third floor. Um, for those of you that are have joined us, let's go ahead and if you are um, participating, go ahead and mute your microphone. And what we will do is at the end of each section, we'll open it up for questions. Okay, everybody clear on that? Yes, okay. <laughs> All right, so so we're going to start with the facility because you can't have a vaulting show without a place to hold it. And for a lot of um, test managers, this is really a hard thing unless you already have a facility, for instance, where you practice and it's big enough for you to host a fest. You're really, really lucky if you've got a place that can host a fest. Um, but if you have a smaller facility and you need to go out and look for a place, um, here are some things that you need to watch out for and things that you need. On page 38 of the rule book, it says that for a level one competition, that means a competition that you can just have everything including A team, B team, C team, you need an arena that is at least 72 and a half feet wide and 16 and a half feet high. And it talks about having footing that is soft and springy. The level two, you can have a level two competition where you can have everything except for the teams and the pot of dough. Um, you can have a little lower ceiling for that at 67 and a half feet wide and 15 and a half feet high. Still, you need the footing that is soft and springy. A lot of times, footing um, will kick out an arena for consideration. Um, 
really hard clumpy clay is not really good but and a lot of them have that especially if you're like in a in a place that does a lot of western writing but uh yeah so so watch the footing uh kathy do you want to take the other considerations i'm sure along with um going into the footing a little bit sometimes you might find a a uh, facility where they'll allow you to bring in footing, um, but a lot of times if it's privately owned, they will not. So be sure to ask on that if that's what you're looking at. Um, stalls and stall sizes. Uh, a lot of teams have big drafts that don't fit comfortably in little 10 by 10 uh, stalls. So you want to make sure that there's a variety of stalls. Uh, you have to have two warm-up rings as well as your competition ring. Um, one for horse warm-up, one for vaulter warm-up, and then, um, of course, competition. You'll need office space for your scoring, for ribbons, for uh, different things like that. Uh, restrooms. They can be outhouses or porta potties, I guess is more politically correct. Uh, Santa cans, whatever you want to call them. Flushers are nice. Not all facilities have those, unfortunately. We want to make sure another thing to look at is for music capabilities, uh, some sort of a sound system uh, for projecting that music? Do you need to bring your own or do they have one that's available in the facility? Seating, a lot of times you can just encourage people to bring their own, own uh, folding chairs or lawn chairs. Sometimes there's uh, benches provided or some sort of uh, seating like that, but you want to make sure that people are comfortable to watch our shows. Parking, is it close? Is it available? Is it marked somehow? Um, is there any? You know, yeah. uh, depending on your facility, if it's uh, the neighbor's barn that just happens to meet all the criteria, do they have parking available for uh, your vehicles that will be visiting as well as the horse trailers that will be there? Uh, Wi-Fi is pretty essential if you're going to be using CompWeb for scoring. Uh, is Wi-Fi available at the facility in whatever office you may find? Or do you need to supply some sort of a uh, backup Wi-Fi system like uh, your phone, I think, can be used as a Wi-Fi sometime, or you can get a personal, personal little Wi-Fi system through some phone companies that works um, as long as they have in their facility area uh, wife or phone availability and such, such as that. Also we need to make sure that there is a separate area, a separate room, a separate little place for the judges to go and relax away from competitors um, for lunch or for breaks just to give them a break. So those are all considerations to take a look at when you're looking at your facility. Great, thanks. And a, a lot of times, especially if you are um, renting a facility, they're going to want um, a deposit. And a lot of times they are also um, limited on the weekends that they are available. So, so sometimes... Well, this is the reason why we look at facility first, because a lot of times for the dates of our competitions, we are limited by the availability of the facility. So, so look first, make sure the facility is available, um, be prepared to pay a deposit, and, um, and then go for there. Sometimes it's, it's months and months in advance. So if you want to use a facility like in July and it is April, um, you'll be lucky. So, so look far ahead in advance. Um, that's my advice on that. Um, are there any questions? Go ahead and unmute your mic if you have a question. Any comments? Okay. 
Hearing none, we will move on to the judge. We have um, in your email, you should have received this judge's contract. Now you can, um, oh, I did just get a, a little chat. Uh, somebody is asking what a normal facility fee is. Um, for a large arena, you can plan um, on spending between six and eight hundred dollars a day. That does not include usually um, stall fees. Uh, stall fees are usually up on top of that, and also um, some facilities charge extra for extra drags with their arena groomer. Um, also, some facilities charge extra for using the music system or the PA system. So, so you do have to watch out. Some some places will kind of nickel and dime you. Make sure that you look at the contract carefully and see what's covered in it. Okay. Any other questions? And I got that question through the little chat icon. So if you have one, go ahead and throw a chat in. That works too. Okay, back to the um, judge's contract. Once you have the date that you've got a facility, you can go ahead and go and try to find a judge for that weekend. Um, and a, a good way, let me just move this over just a little bit. To find a judge, I'm going to go over here. Everybody knows how to get on AmericanVaulting.org, right? I think so. We're going to go over here to judges. And let's see here. We seem to be in, here we go, judge bios. Here we have our active judges, and these are all little bi bios about them. Looks like Jim Daniels is on here. We see all these great people who give up a lot of their time to judge our shows. Um, it's very easy what you can do. You can go through here and look for somebody that you want or sounds good. A lot of things that you can think about is where does this person live? Is it going to be expensive for me to get this person out to my place? Do they live kind of near me? I mean, honestly, it's really great to to rotate your judges around so that um, your shows have different eyes on them all the time. Uh, in the real world, we also look at how expensive it, it is for our show to get them here. For instance, um, let's see here. Where is Kendall? Right here. She's going to be the judge at our um, little show that we're going to use as a, tem a template for this course. And she is a show at the Northeast Washington Mountain Fest every year. And the reason for that is she lives in Spokane. So it's really, really convenient for Tammy to use her <clears throat> because she doesn't have any travel expenses for her. She saves a lot of money that way. So anyway, think about your budget also when you hire a judge. If you want to email a judge, let's say we want decide we want to use Jen Daniels, you just do that and you send her an email saying, um, I have a show on this date and I'm wondering if you're available. And they are usually very quick to get back to you, very good at getting back. And um, once you have an agreement um, through email, at that point, you send that judge a contract. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just fill out this form. You uh, put the name of the event. You put your name there if you're the event manager or secretary. You say where it's going to be, when it starts, when it ends. And right here is listed what your judge is going to charge you for that day. Big R, little R, F-E-I. Um, and then you're going to send two copies 
and you're going to send actually you got I think Kathy you said you do three don't you I make three copies and I keep, I keep one in my uh, show file until I get the signed copy back from the judge thanks that way you're under contract you know exactly who your judge is you know how much you're paying the judge um, then you can start working on their travel any questions so far about judges not a question about I really wish they would put their hometown on their bio um, I'm sorry I didn't quite understand what you said I wish they would put their hometown Oh, on their that would be that would be nice. Although sometimes they resent, uh, some, some of them do say. For instance, Jen Daniel says here she resides in Connecticut. Um, they don't always say. Although um, I can pretty much tell you who the East Coast and West Coast ones are. Yeah, and, and you can look in the directory, but just find your way on the bio page. It would be cool if it just like that. For some reason, you're coming in really garbled for me. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know, and I couldn't figure out how to send a tap. How to send a... A chat. I typed oh. it, well, it in, but I don't see a send spot. Okay. For uh, for sending a check? Is that what yeah. I... Yeah. Okay. A what chat. Will do? A chat. Oh, I'm sorry, say it again. A chat. Oh, a chat. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, you should have a bar with a green bar across the top of it. And it has your telephone on it and your microphone. And there's a little bubble next to the people. Click on that. Does that help? Were you able to find that? Okay, if I see the chat come in, I'll definitely answer the question. Um, are there any other questions concerning the judge's contract? Okay, we're going to go ahead and go on to the judge's courtesy agreement. This has come about um, because of really because of bad experiences that judges have had, um, specifically when it comes to transportation and accommodations. Um, they want to be able to feel safe where they're going. They want to be able to know that somebody's going to pick them up. So, so, so a lot of these things are just really about logistical things on how to take care of our ju judges and help them to feel welcome and help them to know what they're doing. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to mail the judge a prize list at least two weeks prior to the beginning of the competition because a lot of the, the, the classes, especially if they're not recognized, they have special rules and it's tough for a judge to, to get that put in his or her hand at the show and have to learn these special rules just right there. So they're going to go over your prize list um, before they come. Uh, so make sure that your judge has a ride from the airport if you're flying him or her in. There have been instances where there was a miscommunication in teams or whatever and a judge has kind of stood there on the curb wondering what to do. So make sure that that's been taken care of. Um, make sure that you feed them well. Um, they will go out to dinner on their own but you will get um, the bill and that's okay, it shouldn't come out of their pocket. 
you need to offer the judge a hotel um, and not in the instance of one judge get put in somebody's basement on a mattress on the floor with no sheetrock on the wall and fighting going on next next to him. So, you know, that was a bad experience for that person. And so what came out of that was you must offer your judge a hotel. Also at the show, make sure your judge has uh, good food to eat and some snacks and something warm if it's cold. Just basically be good hosts to your judges. They will um, often talk to one another and say, yeah, I had a great, a great time at this particular show. Or they might say, I had a horrible time at this show. And they do talk to, together. So sometimes if you don't take care of your judge, you might have a hard time fighting a judge in the future. Kathy, you have uh, any other thing to say on that? Uh, nope. <laughs> Okay, here's a question. Um, if a manager is paying per diem, then why is a manager paying for dinner out also? Um, you should be paying one or the other. So if you pay for your, if you take, let's say you take your judge out to dinner and you pick up the check, your, man, your judge should not charge you for that meal. You're welcome. Any other questions on that? Okay. All right. Any other questions about judges? All right. We are moving right along. Okay, so you have your venue, and you have your judge or judges. Then the next thing that we want to do is we want to send in our AVA recognition form. Do a copy of that as well. Um, this has got to be sent in within 45 days of your show. But we like to send it in as, as, as soon as you know your judge and as soon as you know your venue. Because when you post your prize list, you're going to want to say that this is an AVA recognized show. So even though it says you don't have to do it, you know, before 45 days, you really should. So that you can have that, like I say, people can look at your prize list and say, oh good, this is, a, this is an AVA recognized show. So... You got your place, you got your person, this is your next thing. And this is um, this is a pretty, also a pretty self-explanatory thing. Now in the rule book, it says you have to fill out this part, the show secretary. You have to um, fill out the pieces here about competition. And... The first part of facility, so up to here. Um, the rest of it you don't have to fill out. If you have that information, that's great. But let's say you don't know yet who your veterinarian on call is. It's okay if you don't know that yet. You can still go ahead and send that in and get that uh, approved before you know that. Okay, it's forty dollars. And Kathy, how many uh, how many copies of this do we need? Um, only one needs to be submitted. But here again, I make two and keep one until I get the recognition back from the national office. Okay, they're usually pretty quick about turning it around and giving the um, recognition status? Craig will usually uh, send that by email. Then you're able to say on your prize list, AVA recognized. Okay, any questions about this particular form? Okay. 
Okay. All right, then the next thing that you're going to want to do is uh, you're going to go to, you're going to want your show to pop up in CompWeb. And um, it's very easy how you do it. What you're going to do is you're going to email Russ Hobby at Russ.Hobby at HobbyFamily.org. And you're going to send him a little email. I made a little example email. Dear Russ, I'm the fest manager for whatever show. It will be held at, tell them where, on when, with so-and-so as the judge. Will you please open a comp web spot for me for this show? Thank you very much. Find you. And he is very fast. Um, all the times that I've asked for shows to be put on comp web, it's up within a day. Um, and then you will get an email back from him. Actually, you'll get an email back from CompWeb that will tell you what your passwords are. And um, then you can get into that program, which is a different day for us. But uh, you will have it set up, and you can start uploading your prize list. Well, actually, first you have to write your prize list, and that's going to be next. Are there any questions about how to get your show onto CompWeb? All right, we whipped through a whole bunch of information, so I'm going to open it up for the um, any questions or comments over everything that we've gone over so far, because we're going to spend a little time on the prize list. Is there a certain uh, length of time, I'm sorry, is there a certain length of time that judges should arrive before the show and stay until after? Is it typical to have them come in the day before and then leave the day after the show ends, or does it just depend on the judge what their preference is? Um, a lot of times they come in the day before the show starts. Okay. So that they can, usually the shows start fairly early, like at 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning. Right. So it's really good for them to be there already. Uh, sometimes they'll come in in the evening, sometimes in the afternoon of the day before. Um, if it's a Saturday-Sunday show, a lot of them do like to leave on Sunday night because, honestly, a lot of these judges have day jobs. And so they like to be back on Monday. Uh, a lot of them do. Um, go ahead and ask them, you know, what their preference is and and see but um, there are several instances where, as we plan the competition day, we have to kind of plan around when the judge is going to scoot okay. on, on Sunday afternoon. So, um, you know, do your best to, to really communicate with your judge as to when they want to go. Uh, also, you know, it's frankly cheaper for you to get them out because you've got one day less of a hotel right. and per diem. Um, so sometimes it is difficult, especially if their their flight has to leave, let's say, like four or five in the afternoon. Well, that takes out a lot of time. You know, let's say they have to leave three hours before that to catch their flight. Well, that means that they're not at your show for, you know, after two o'clock or three o'clock. So you have to adjust your show that way, or if you absolutely can't adjust your show, then what you have to do is um, ask them if they could please leave Monday morning. Okay. Great. That's Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay. The prize list, we're, we're going to spend a little bit more time on this prize list because this is, this is kind of a, a writing endeavor. But if you, if you use like a template or if you look at other people's prize lists and kind of substitute your own things, um, it's not so bad. There's a... Um, there's a list of things that you need in your prize list on page 24 of the rule book. And what I've done is 
I've just copied and pasted those things right there. Um, and we sent for you a uh, prize list template. I'm going to open that up. Um, this is kind of a kind of a, a modification of last year's Utah Fun Fest prize list and Tammy Deneau's, um prize list for the NEW Fest. Um, let's just go through it and let's see if this thing has got everything we need according to the rules. So we've got it has to have the date, time, and place of competition. Okay, so we have our name here. We have our place, date, and time, and judges. So if I just come in here, um, if I wanted to use this as my as my I can just I can just write this in, and I can change the font. I can do whatever you whatever I want. So we've got this big list of things that that we need. We can we can like I say substitute these things, and then we could have everything that is in a date, time, and place. If we look for fees. People want to know how much they're going to be spending to come to this show. Most shows have a registration fee, and sometimes that depends on what your venue is going to cost. For instance, if the venue will charge you extra for rakes, and if they they uh, charge you extra for excuse me, if they charge you extra for the sound system. All these things, it's going to come out of your pocket. So if you want to cover yourself a little bit, you can, you know, say do a $30 registration fee, which is is very common. The AVA charges $4 per volunteer. Seven? Seven. Thank you. Region 3 is $4. Check with your region and see what the region fee is for your region, if it has one, probably does. $7 AVA fee, at the end of the show, you're going to count up all your vaulters and your lungers, and you're going to multiply that number by 7, and you're going to send a check to the AVA for that amount, plus $25 for each person who participated in your show who is not a member of the AVA. Actually, Lori, the AVA fee only is accounted uh, by vaulters, not lungers. Oh, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any questions? So far? Okay. As we go on to fees, you're going to decide how much you're going to charge for your vaulters to vault in these classes. Um, if I come over here, I'm going to dig something out here if I can. This is the prize list for the North we Northeast Washington Mountain Fest for this year. This is written by Tammy Deneau. Tammy is actually probably the cheapest show I think any vaulter could go to. These are very small numbers. Most shows charge more for their classes than this. But she likes to keep her fest very affordable. So these are the these are the amounts that she has put down. And as fest managers you can decide what you want to charge for these things. Now, if you are going to host a USEF recognized show, which is a different 
webinar that's like show management 201. Um, these are all going to be higher because you have a lot more expenses when it comes to judges and officials. But this is ABA recognized. We, she, we don't have those expenses, and so she wants to keep them low. Are there any questions on the fees? And the prize list as we go along, go on here. Okay. Uh, we have to make sure everybody knows the closing date. Tammy's got the closing date right here. April 4th. And in the um, template that we have sent you, some people like to mail their entries. Honestly, in the last few years, I haven't had anybody mail me entries. Everybody goes on to CompWeb to register. But if they if they do want to mail your entry, mail their entries in, make a postmark date for a couple days before your close of entries, and that way you'll know that you have everybody. And then list your close of entries here on CompWeb. And on CompWeb, you can actually put a time. Tammy's put 10 p.m. PST. Um, and it's an AVA rule. You cannot, if somebody has not signed up for the show by April 4th on 2018, by 10 o'clock p.m., they cannot participate in the show. There's no post entries allowed. Now, if it's a... If it's not AVA recognized, if you just want to have a little show and not recognize it with the AVA, you can do whatever you want. But it is a, a rule that you cannot let anybody sneak in late. Um, any questions about that? Okay. If you have an idea that you want to run, copper on Saturday and you want trot on Sunday, you can kind of list that. It's not necessary, but a lot of families kind of like to know. Okay, let me go back here. Judges. We took care of that right on the first page, right here. All right. Availability of stabling, housing, and eating facilities. It's got to be in here. Okay. Okay, here we have that in our little thing. And here's this information here. Lodging, camping, parking, food. It's good information for people who have traveled to come to your best. Events, divisions, and classes offered. Okay, so here it is in the template. And what you, you're going to want to... Put your class numbers here. Make sure you put your class numbers. That's going to be important for putting it into the system. And when you go into the system, you'll see that every class has a number already. Um, when Comfort first came out, it was very frustrating for um, Palm Oaks that people would change those numbers around. Don't change the numbers around. 01 is always A team, 02 is always B team, and on down. Now, if you have your unrecognized classes, you're going to be making up numbers that are not used for other classes, and um, you'll be writing that in here. Okay, any questions on that? Everybody following okay?
Okay, we've got a description. The next thing we need a pudding. And I'll be honest, here's, here it is in here. The pudding, I think, to me, is the hardest part of um, getting things right for, for everybody. I've never been to a show where everybody was completely satisfied and happy with pudding. It's just really difficult to get it right. Um, here is the description of the Spokane Sport Horse Farm in Spokane where the NEW Fest is going to be held. The description of the stalls, they're 12 by 12. And a lot of times they'll include a bag of shavings, but then you got to buy extras and you need to let them know where they can be purchased or if they have to bring them themselves. Okay, time and place of the draw. Let's see where it is here. At the bottom, go down just a little bit. There you go. Oh, draw order of go. And you know, this is kind of a throwback to before CompWeb, I think, um, because it used to be that people with their paper entries would sit around a big table and put it all in a big hat and decide which team was going to go first all the time by pulling it out of a, a bowl or whatever. Um, now what happens is order of go uh, is generated by CompWeb and all you do to do the, the draw or order of go is you just put a push a button and uh, everything just kind of falls into place. It's really nice. But we let you know when we're going to push that button. Questions, comments, yeah. And and this some of this stuff is going to make a little bit more sense the next time that we meet um, because we're going to be talking a lot about CompWeb the next two sessions that we have. And uh, so you're going to see from the back end of all that how this how this is all set up. But for now, there's just a button that you hit and it all comes down. Kathy, do you have any, have I missed something? Am I, am I good? Um, not that I can see at this point. Okay. Feeling good. <laughs> um, music procedures. Um, I've got a question that came up. Uh, the question is, does the AVA push the button for the order of go or does the FEST host? The FEST host takes care of that. Truthfully, um, once the AVA has seen your recognition application, they are completely hands off. It is, it is your baby. So you have got all the control over what happens. You have um, really the only time, you, the, the other time that you're going to deal with the AVA is at the end of the show when you turn in the recognized score sheets and you send them a check. Unless there's insurance involved, which is the next. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they do watch that. They, yeah, so that's a new rule, and we'll we'll get that just as soon as we're done with the um, with the prize list. Prize list, yeah. We are shooting through this information really fast. Um, okay, so music procedures. Now, when you looked at your facility before, and you looked to see what kind of uh, system that they have, you can you can do this a lot of different ways, you guys. Um, when I first started many years ago, everybody lined up their little uh, cassette tapes. And then we went to CDs. And now most shows will up have, you, have uh, people upload their music so that the music person can have it all on their computer and there's no digging around for CDs or anything else. Um, it's really, really convenient, and I really, really do recommend that you do it that way. 
that being said, there's nothing wrong with asking people to bring CDs, although it's becoming harder and harder to burn them since the computer computers don't even typically have a CD burner anymore. Um, so it depends on your equipment. Most places will have a, a, a way to use an auxiliary cord to plug in your computer or your iPod or, or your um, iPad or whatever tablet or other computer that you have loaded it on. Um, I do also recommend that you have a backup system. It has happened before that somebody's computer has crashed during a competition. And, you know, it's interesting to me how much for granted we take um, the music. But, boy, when it's gone, you really notice. Uh, it's just an integral part to the show. So I like to bring a computer that's loaded with all the music, and I also like to bring an iPad that's loaded with all the music. Um, and that way, if my computer crashes, I have something else that I can do. I also have a backup thumb drive with all the music. Um, there was actually one nationals where a computer crashed and luckily it was compulsories, but it sure was weird to watch the vaulters do their compulsories in silence. You don't want that. So make sure that you have everything, which is another reason to upload your music because you have it, it's there, um, and you usually know have surprises it, and, it, and it makes it a lot easier on your music manager as well because they don't have to find the cassette, they don't have to find the, the CD, it's just right there and they can point and click on it. Um, and for those of you who are interesting or interested in how to do the uploads, um, here is a section Obviously, I am doing the music for the new fest. If you want to, you can copy this down or you can um, paste and copy and paste it someplace. Uh, it's easy to do. It does need to be in an MP3 format. A lot of times people now are, are submitting them in an MP4, but they're just not as um, robust files. Sometimes they are easy, more easily corrupted unless they are an MP3. Lori, Debbie has a question on chat. Thanks. <clears throat> oh, okay, uh, when you download these, for, well, this uh, oh, here's the question. Is there a special program to put the music in or just folders on a computer? What I do is um, I use this account here at www.box.com, and um, people can upload all their music. All the teams can upload their music to this particular file, and then you can download that file onto your computer where you can import it into your favorite music program. So if you're, uh, if you have iTunes, you can import it into your iTunes program and make a file for each team. And if they've named it right, like in here, 34A, Copper Comps, their team name, their person name right here. It's very easy to click the correct music for each Vault or Go. Did that, that answer your question okay, Deb? Any other questions about that? Okay.
It's important to say if no music is provided, none will be played. Honestly, there are some times, it's, it's not very often, because usually coaches are pretty good about getting the music in. Um, or sometimes what, what happens is they just forget to upload a certain file, and then we have no music for that person. And, and as music, the music people will try to let coaches know, hey, I have no music for Susie. And then there's a mad scramble, and, and we usually can find some way to get Susie's music on there, because we don't want Susie to have a bad experience. But it's a pain, and we do try to discourage that, so there will be a $5 fee. And that one. Okay. Any other questions about music? Okay. Now, as I said earlier, all unrecognized classes must have specific deductions. If we go into this price list that's already been written, and Tammy does it kind of kind of in, interestingly. She makes a a caret next to the ABA recognized classes, and then she does a, an asterisk uh, next to the classes that are not recognized. Um, so you can see. Gold individual, silver individual, bronze individual, and then beginning canter. That's not an ABA recognized class. So a judge might look at that and say, I wonder how I should judge that. And so Tammy tells her, assisted mounts are allowed, minus two. Compulsory is at the canter, and then the freestyle is at the walk. As best managers, you can be super creative on the classes that you want to have. You can, you can have some really fun classes, like... Um, Last uh, fun fest at Nationals, Kathy and I came up with the uh, hobby horse class. That was a lot of fun. Preliminary, of yeah, go ahead. A lot of creativity was was shown in that class. It was fun. It was hysterical. It was a lot of fun. And you can do that as a fest manager. You can throw any old any old class that you want in there, as long as the judge knows how to judge it. Um. Just knowing that if it's an ABA recognized class, it's going to be judged according to the ABA rules. But if it's not a recognized class, you can make whatever rules you want for that class, or you can make whatever class you want. There's a lot here on class number 40, Mighty Munchkins, that's the five and under. It has a specific way of being judged, and it's all written out here so that the judge knows what to do. Shannon class is a class that we have a lot here in Region 3. It's just a music interpretation class. Um, California Gold. I think that's a team that, I mean, a, a class that originates maybe in California. But in Tammy's class, she lives almost to Canada. She's like 30 miles to Canada. And so she has um, a, a Canadian team that likes to come down. And so Tammy likes to offer some Canadian classes. And this is her, um, her section of Canadian classes. And she specifically says which rule book to look at for judging these particular classes. Okay, any questions about that? We have here a section on awards. Um, a lot of people want to know. A lot of people want to know what um, what placings we'll get. How to put on a show. Is that is that a question or am I just hearing background noise? Okay. Um, so for instance, first through ten might get a ribbon, and then first through three for overalls, things like that. If you want to have a dance, picnic, a barbecue, or you know whatever, make a, a place here in the other announcements. 
And it is nice to let people know what your volunteer requirements are going to be. If you're a team that wants to just take care of this and it's your fundraiser and you're going to take care of everything, um, you can put none or you can just leave that section out altogether. Um, we'll teach you how to, to use the volunteer section of CompWeb if you need help running your fest from other teams. Okay, there's a stabling section. Some places allow haul-ins and some places do not. Make sure that you go from your facility what the fee is. If somebody decides to say, hey, I, I only live a little bit down the road, so I don't want to pay the, um, the stabling cost, so I just want to I just want to haul in each day. Make sure your facility allows that or doesn't allow that. Or, and you can say so too as the, a fest manager. I'm going to allow that or I'm not going to allow that. Okay. It's kind of nice to have this little section in there. Um, you, you, the management reserves to write to correct any error or make necessary changes in the schedule program or prize list. The management accepts no responsibility for the decision of the judges. Okay. And here is an example of a hold harmless. You really want one of these for every one of your competitors. Um, it's just basically all the parents are saying we know that things happen around horses and we're not going to hold you, they, the A, or your people responsible. And on that, um, the AVA does not want to be responsible financially for somebody's um, injuries that may happen. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead. Kathy and I sent you. I'm going to hide that. This is a um, application for specialty program insurers. You're free to choose whatever insurance company that you want. But um, SPI has a contract with the AVA. Uh, we like to use it. It's just easy. You put your the information of your show and you want to put the AVA under additional insured. Do your information. It's going to be um, Kathy, do you remember what it is per day? It seems like it's about $280 a day, roughly. Um, the old form used to have it specified. This one does not. So you may have to um, contact them by phone to find out what amount you should be sending by uh, money order or cashier's check. Thank you. If you don't, this is a new rule, if you don't send a copy of your policy, of your completed OK policy, within two weeks of yourself, if you don't get that to the national office, Craig, um, what they're going to do is they're going to buy a policy for you and then they're going to give you $100 for their um, administrative fee. So you do want to make sure that you get a copy of this to the AVA. So I guess that's another thing that you need to do for the AVA. Because the AVA started looking around and, and they, they decided that they're um, pretty exposed as far as um, being named in a lawsuit. So they want to make sure that they're covered as being part of them, so, so, which is understandable. They just want to see the proof of it. Okay, everybody clear on that?
All right, so. And I didn't quite, I didn't, I didn't leave the questions for the prize list. Any questions about the prize list? I will say that once you have put everything together, um, and by the way, I'm just going to digress this a little bit here. This way. This is a template. You can, of course, decorate it. Use whatever you font you want. As long as all this information is in it, it's going to be just fine. Now, Sue D. Toll is the uh, competition secretary, and she's made it known to Kathy and I that she would like a printed copy of it sent to her. So, um, and it's and it's within 30 days of the competition. Otherwise, your recognition is going to be kicked out. Um, when you when you press the invitations on CompWeb, and the invitations go out to all the teams, copies of this prize list go to everybody that you have invited, plus people that you don't know that you've invited, such as all of the judges and all of the uh, the people who are part of the shows in the ABA. So Sue and um, Technical Committee Chairman, Chris Kendall, the, the, all the judges and the, and the registered, and you have to, you have to invite all the people in your region. You can invite everybody in the country if you want, but you have to invite all the people in your region, everyone. Um, and luckily, those people are listed inside CompWeb, and we'll show you that in a couple weeks when we do CompWeb portion. But anyway, Sue wants a paper copy mailed to her. And really, what happens is we send these out more like 60 days prior to the competition. That gives people a few weeks to decide if they're going to come. And uh, the close of entries are typically a month out. And that gives you time to plan the way the show is going to run. And it gives you time to order ribbons, things like that. Okay, are there any questions? We do have one more section on the budget to go through, so. Oh, yes. Thank you. And okay, I can do that. Do that now. Um, I am going to throw the ball to Kathy, and she's going to go over the budget. Okay, <clears throat> so what is all this going to cost and how do I figure out if I'm going to make money or lose money? Well, there's a lot of planning that would need to go into that. And if you pull up your budget sheet, um, the one that was sent this morning in the email I think is pretty much the most recent. Uh, if you're using the one from last night, there's just uh, these three items here that were added. Okay, um, so facilities, you're going to kind of figure out once you know where you're, who your facility is, what they're going to do. Uh, you're going to figure out what their deposit is, what their daily fee is. Okay, and then looking at that, am I going to need to rent chairs? Kathy? Chairs. 
Kathy, I don't see your budget sheet. It's on my screen. Okay. <laughs> it's invisible. Sorry. Um, when you click on screen sharing, it'll have a thing that says show all. Yay. Better? Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. So this is the budget sheet. Now I think you can see it. Yes. Cool. Uh, chair rental, are you going to need to use it? Are you not? If you don't need, don't need chair rental, then you wouldn't have to fill in a cost. Wi-Fi access, here again, mic and sound system, do you need those? Are those a potential extra cost? Um, in usage fee, you might have, you know, stabling and, and any footing or anything else that you might need to add, you know, you could put under the facilities. Just to kind of give you an idea, okay, this is kind of where we're at. When you're looking at judges, where are they coming from like we were discussing? Are they driving themselves so you have a... Uh, mile uh, mileage charge or are they flying so you have an airfare um, plus they're parking at the at the airport where they leave from their time that they leave their car at the airport all these different things would need to fall in there uh, they're lodging for the time that he, they're at your show their daily fees any meals, which could be a per diem, or it could be, you know, just, okay, we're going, we as show management are going to take them out on this day, and it's going to be approximately this amount. Um, snacks and drinks would normally be while they're judging or on the days that they're judging to keep them uh, happy. Uh, gifts, if you decide that you want to give gifts to your judges, some small token of thanks for them uh, being with you. When you're looking at ABA costs, you have, of course, your $40 show recognition, your $7 per Valter fee, and your $4 if you're a Region 3 Valter fee. Any non-member fees would need to be collected, but these you may or may not know, but it's good. Okay, we're going to expect approximately, we're hoping for 100 Valters. So you could put $700 here and you could put $400 here. That those are going to be costs that are going to be collected, but they're also going to go out. Okay, they're going to be expenses for you. Um, when you're looking into how much it actually costs to rent your show in addition to those items, you have to look at how much insurance is going to be, what you think your ribbon costs are going to be, score sheets. Are you going to order them from the ABA, ABA in duplicate, or are you just going to make copies of them? Um, and then along with score sheets, you've got the labeling, you know, your labels that you stick on them. Postage would be for sending off your final uh, paperwork back to the competition secretary or to Sue. Office costs, you're going to have uh, your copier paper, ink, pens, clipboards, timers, bells, calculators, anything that you can think of that um, might be needed at the judges' tables as well as running the scoring office uh, itself and uh, having someone front the, the main office for you. Um, are you going to have Walter bags, lunger treats, or lunger gifts, horse treats? Are you looking at something like that? Be sure to put that in your budget. Sometimes uh, medics will have some sort of a standby fee, or if you're lucky enough where a Walter parent is an EMT or something like that, some sort of um, Numeration to them for their time might be nice, or 
Um, if they're willing just to volunteer, that's great too, but you may have costs as far as your medic. Same with your uh, veterinary. You want to, uh, if they're not on site, are you going to have a minimal fee uh, for them to be standby, standby and available for your weekend? All things to look at. Concessions, if you have on-site concessions, uh, do you need to pay them a certain amount um, to be there? or are they willing to be there uh, just for whatever they might sell to the, the audience that is there, the vaulters, and et cetera. All things to look at. Some extras that you're going to possibly collect for as well, but sell as well, might be, you know, do they offer camping? Okay, camping is one area where you may be able to um, make just a little bit, if they, they, the site says your camping is $22 a night, you might say it's $25 a night. You know, something to look at. Souvenir shirts, it costs $8 to make them and you're going to sell them for $10. You know, those are things to look at where you're going to need to fit them into your budget though just to make sure that you know um, kind of where you're at. Um, in the income, let's see, the only thing that's not in here is probably the registration fee, which could go under show or ABA, either one, um, because that's an income that's going to help cover. Here I just have all income, what you estimate. Um, okay, I'm going to estimate it to bring in $13,000. What a nice show, huh? Um, our deposit's going to be $800, and our usage is going to be $800. We're going to have to rent chairs. Um, wi Fi comes with, the sound system comes with. Our judges are coming from far away, so we're only going to have one judge. Their airfare is $350. And um, their room is $150 a night for two nights. And we recognize judge. They're a big R, so say they $160. Um, you can see how fast our money is going away just in these items. The, these, these here normally are going to be included in your total income. You can separate them out if you would like. This is on 100. We don't have any non-members because we're a show that's late in the season and everybody's already a member. Um, let's see, ribbons. Ribbons, depending on how fancy you want to be, can, can be costly. Um, you can see I'm just kind of filling in some items just to see where we're at under gift me. Um, luckily our medic and our veterinary don't have standby and our concessions are going to go ahead and do it just for whatever they're going to make. We're going to uh, make shirts and we hope to get $350 or we, it's going to cost us about $350 to make our shirts. Okay, so just looking at a basic like that, we're looking at the show costing about $6,000, $6,500, which is normally the ones that I've run can run anywhere from you know, six to ten thousand dollars to rent a show of about a hundred vaulters, and then it just depends on your cost along the way as to if you actually make money or if you don't. Um, you know, we were kind of talking on the care of our judges. There are things that come into play in your budget uh, that you want to make sure that you can take care of them. I was kind of jumping off on a different tangent, sorry. So budget-wise, 
you kind of create your own budget and then you figure out your actual cost to get your, your profit or your loss on it. This last year at the regional, Region 3 Championships, we had an issue come up where a judge came into our office at lunch the first day and stated that they were not be one judge anymore if the, if the arena that they were in continued to be as it was. Um, unfortunately, we had a heavy metal band playing many bands actually playing just right outside the horse arena where we were and it was an enclosed arena inside a building so it was just reverberating. So as show management we were called upon to fix that situation. <laughs> well lots of people had paid to see the bands and lots of people had paid to come do a horse show. So we were able to switch our judge to um, the other half of our outside arena, which kind of sounds funny, but because of the way that the walls were in the outside arena, it was actually better. And um, luckily it was only for the one day and we could go back to them on the second day. But you, as a fest management, you do need to be flexible with your facility, to a certain extent, with your facility, with your judges' requirements, with what is happening that you have no control over, um, like at a fairgrounds, other events being scheduled the same time a horse event is. So you just need to be sure to be flexible in that and be able to um, work with other people. Any questions about the budget? Okay. Okay. I will give it back to Lori. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Um, this is a reminder if your microphone is not muted, please do that. We're getting a lot of background noise. I think somebody's doing dishes or something. Um, so please mute, mute your mic if it's not muted. Um, I called up the, thank you, I, I called up the, the American Vaulting Association comp web page just to show you what it looks like. If you haven't seen it, I think probably all of you have seen it, e either as a test manager or as somebody signing up for a show. Here is the, the show that we are going to be talking about a lot. And um, here you can see in the event documents files the prize list. And we can go over this. Everybody's very familiar with this. And this is the, the document that everybody's going to be reading, you know, the, the coaches and the families. They're like, okay, what's going on at this show? These are the, the classes that I can enter. And up here is how much it's going to cost me, where it's going to be, when it's going to be, who's going to be watching us. And um, so that's why the prize list is so important. It has all the information that we need in it, uh, that people need to know. Okay, so this is, like I say, after you talk to... Russ Hobby, you're going to find the name of your show right in here. And it's actually kind of fun to see the name of your show right there. I'll tell you the truth. It's, it's pretty fun. Lori, click on Region 3 Championships because this is what it will look like when you first go to it before you've done anything to it as it is just put on CompWeb this is how it starts out and then next time we meet we'll um, discuss how to move from this point and fill in all the stuff that is showing on the uh, New Mountain Fest page now. Yes. We had to go ahead and upload some of the things <clears throat> before our next meeting so that um, 
we could get the price list out in time. But yes, this is what it'll look at look like. It's blank. There's nothing here. Teach you how to um, put that rest of the information that goes right here. We'll put that on and go from there. It's, it's a pretty important meeting next time. Um, if things aren't loaded correctly into Comp Web, it's a headache. It's, it's hard. So I really encourage you to keep on coming and watching <clears throat> and learning. So right now I want to open it back up to any other questions or comments about what you've learned so far today. Did anybody learn anything? Yes. Oh, good. good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, any other um, comments about FEA? Oh, you're welcome. Somebody says thank you. Okay, anything else before we close? Like I say, let next time it's going to be the Comp Web session. So I really encourage you to come back and watch. We'll practice it together. We'll make it so you can log on yourself and do some things in Comp Web. Um, a lot of people say, I'm so afraid of Comp Web, but don't be afraid of Comp Web. It sometimes is a, a steep learning curve, but once you get it, it, it makes sense. So, um, and it's the AVA's program for now. I know there's been talk about changing it, but for now, this is what we have. Um, and it works. Works great. Okay. So, we will see you in a couple weeks. I believe it's uh, March 10th. Am I right? Yes. March 10th, same time, same place. And we'll, uh, like I say, delve into Compweb. Thank you for coming, and thank you again for being willing to be best managers. We need more people like you. Thank you. You're thank welcome. You. See you in a couple weeks.